Hi everyone and welcome to BSAD 111 Investing in Strengths. I'm your instructor Mark Pogue. I'm also the executive director of the Clifton Strengths Institute and um, uh, uh, currently we're in the uh, the old building CBA 201 um, and a little bit more difficult to find. It's on the second floor at the end of the uh, right at the top of the staircase. If we've moved into the new building uh, you might be listening to this recording after we've already moved into the new building. Uh, I'll be a lot easier to find in the new Clifton Strengths Institute. And uh, so that brings us to the question, why do we have a course on strengths? Why is there an institute within the College of Business um, uh, that is completely devoted to uh, understanding and helping students, uh, understanding strengths and helping students uh, leverage those strengths to be successful? Um, I think there's a number of reasons for that. There's a lot of research to support that uh, a strengths-based approach to your development and understanding your strengths puts you in a lot better position uh, to be successful in the future, and that's really what we want for you. Um, we want to figure out what energizes you uh, more to the heart of it. So we call it, we, we call it a strengths course. Uh, you're going to find out what your strengths are. Uh, but really at, at the heart of that, uh, what we're trying to figure out is what are those behaviors uh, that are consistent with who you are? And all of us have different behaviors. We're all very different people. Um, and we have different behaviors that motivate us to, to do things. Uh, how is it that we can help you understand better uh, those motivations, those behaviors that you have, uh, and then leverage those to get the things done that are important to you? Uh, so really, what we're trying to do with this course is help you be successful on your own terms. Um, uh, I think courses in the past have oftentimes emphasized uh, different ways to, to success, not, and, and uh, all of those are valid. Uh, but a lot of times uh, those, those paths to success that are described to you or that others describe to you are ones that were uh, relevant and helpful to themselves. And what we want to do is give you a set of tools to be able to help you determine your own course. Um, so we'll be uh, tackling a number of different topics during the course uh, to, to help you uh, understand those behaviors and to help you understand those strengths better and give you a platform for experimenting with those strengths uh, so that you can better understand how to maybe utilize those into the future as you look at, at opportunities that come to you. Um, we want to help you uh, use your experiences and help you, uh, and, and help you in designing uh, uh, for yourself a life that really fits for you. Uh, we want to help you design uh, a life that uh, 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 best utilizes your strengths and gives you the best opportunity to do the things that you like to do every day. Um, uh, case in point is my own career path. Um, uh, I got a degree in business management, science, and computer systems. Uh, graduated with a with a, a degree from the business college and and immediately entered into a um, a, a role with um, a large computer organization. Uh, computer company in the company in the in the country, and um, I was suited for the work. Um, uh, I had the skills and knowledge that I needed to do the work effectively, and um, uh, was successful at the role. Um, uh, was you know in a sales role as well as a consulting role to to uh, companies that were using our products, and so um, I really had the opportunity to use my strengths quite a bit. Um, but it wasn't a perfect situation, and even though I was, you know, pretty successful in terms of my uh, hitting my sales goals and um, uh, achieving uh, sales success within the organization, I didn't feel like that was really where I wanted to land uh, ultimately. And eventually, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, 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 shift uh, my career and and into the next phase of my career in uh, nonprofit work and. Uh, for almost 13 years was working with uh, an organization called Young Life, working with high school and college students and uh, learning how uh, to operate within a nonprofit environment and enjoyed that very much. And then, and then at another point in time, I decided to shift my, my role again and went to work for Gallup and spent the last 15 years with Gallup uh, as a vice president in uh, uh, sales uh, for our higher education division and then transitioned in, into the uh, senior director for strengths education. Uh, a lot of my work, uh, all of my work at Gallup had to do with strengths-based development, uh, whether in a sales role or as a consultant and development specialist, a uh, content development specialist with Gallup. And, um, uh, and it led to this last opportunity, uh, my most current job uh, of working for the University of Nebraska uh, as the uh, director of the Clifton Strengths Institute. Um, I, I think all of those roles, as I look back on them, utilize my strengths in, in particular ways, but I think as well, each role that I took uh, gave me a better opportunity uh, to leverage my strengths in the best way possible. And um, that took a while. 
uh, I spent a lot of time and a lot of years getting to a place where I felt like I was in almost a perfect role. Uh, I felt like my role at Gallup, the only way that it could have gotten any better was if it was on a boat in the Caribbean. Uh, so I was doing the work that I like to do. All I wanted to do is change my location, maybe. Uh, and that's everybody's dream, right? To put all of those things together, not just to have a great job and to love the work that you do, but also to do it in a place that you want to, where you want to be. Um, and, uh, and so we want to give you that opportunity, hopefully to kind of compress that time cycle that it took for me to get to a place where I felt like I was utilizing my strengths every day. Uh, we'd love for you to get to a place where, uh, you can find a role, uh, maybe within an organization or maybe starting your own business or, um, uh, however, however that turns out for you, we want to enable you to get into a place where, uh, you can leverage your strengths and uh, do it in a place where you want to be and be happy in the work that you do. Uh, have your work be meaningful as well. Um, and I think all of those things um, are at least partially influenced by an understanding of your strengths. So let's go ahead and get to it. And uh, 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 we'll, in this course, we'll explore uh, your strengths. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, also uh, we'll also study your strengths within the context of working within organizations on teams. Also have a, um, a brief look at your strengths within the context of your leadership style. And then we'll also look at strengths in a broader context of um, uh, how you can leverage your strengths um, to uh, better place yourself uh, within organizations and, and wherever you end up uh, physically um, to experience a life that has um, uh, engagement in your work and also higher levels of well-being uh, for your whole life. And so I'm looking forward to having this journey with you. And let's go ahead and jump into this first, first PowerPoint. Hello, everyone, and welcome to BSAD 111, Investing in Strengths. This is our first week of our online course and um, um, or first module of our online course. Uh, we might, you might be taking this in a shorter format or a longer format. Typically, it's eight weeks, but it's five weeks in the summer. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, uh, we have a team supporting you in the course and want to make, uh, make ourselves available, want to give you every opportunity to be successful in the course. My name is Mark Pogue. I'm the executive director of the Clifton Strengths Institute. I'm also the instructor for, for BSAD 111. <clears throat> we have two other folks helping us. One is Samantha Canelli. She's the coordinator for the Clifton Strengths Institute, and as well, Ellen Brown, a graduate assistant that we have right now. And uh, we're available. You can contact us at strengths underscore lab at unl.edu. And as well, you can visit us in the CBA at 201 in the Clifton Strengths Institute. Or um, if, it's, uh, if we're in the new building, then uh, we are in um, the new Clifton in Strengths Institute on the main floor of the new College of Business. And uh, would love to have you visit us there as well uh, to find out more information about your strengths or to answer any questions that you might have. <clears throat> course description, all of the details about this course are in the syllabus, so be sure to check that out. In fact, um, uh, there's a requirement to read the syllabus and a short quiz that you need to take. So make sure that you check that out on Canvas and get that done in the first week. But back to the course description, a brief course description of 111. And, uh, and our course is uh, enabling students to have a strong start, start towards a great career and a great life. And we're thinking about two ways in which we achieve that goal. And one is that uh, we dive deep into strengths-based development. We help you understand those natural talents and behaviors that you have that can be developed into strengths and how to leverage those. And then we also help you create an individualized strengths plan uh, based on some time that you're going to be spending with a strengths coach if you're taking this in either the fall or the spring. Currently, that's not, offer, not offered for uh, the summer, summer students. Uh, course objectives after successfully completing BSAD 111. One is we're going to help you affirm, develop, and apply the strengths you have uh, towards specific outcomes. And when we say that, what we mean is that you'll be taking a, a brief assessment. You'll be taking about a 30-minute assessment that's going to identify some of your strengths, not all of them. But it is pretty effective in at least getting us some information that helps you understand how you can develop strengths and how you can leverage those to be successful. So it's a great start. And uh, so we're going to affirm you around some existing talents and behaviors that you have. We're going to help you, um, uh, uh, help you build some tools that will help you develop those strengths and then apply those strengths towards specific outcomes. I think that's a real key point is that, and when we think about strengths, we're thinking about not just personality, but behaviors that can be leveraged to get things done. So with that in mind, uh, some of the things we want to get done in this course is we want to help you apply strengths uh, towards your academics. We want you to help uh, help you think about strengths in terms, your own personal strengths in terms of time management and study habits, for instance. 
those two specifically, I think, are are ones that um, really do require a unique approach. It, it's it's uh, nobody studies the same way. Nobody manages their time in the same way. Now, there's a lot of folks out there that have suggested that this is the way you manage your time and, uh, you know, you use this app on your phone or you use this, this planner or whatever it is. Um, but I believe it, it requires uh, an individualized approach, and um, we feel like Strengths is a great way to help you figure out those behaviors that are innate to you that you can leverage uh, to better manage your time and to uh, be more effective with your studying. Uh, we also want to use Strengths to help you understand <clears throat> a little bit more about the major that you've selected, or if you're still in the process, to help you select a major, and, and to do that based on the uniqueness that you possess so that the, the major you choose really fits who you are, and to extend that further into, uh, into your career and helping you understand how uh, your unique behaviors uh, can be leveraged in a particular way to be successful in the career of your choosing. We also want to help you manage your own personal engagement and well-being, uh, both within the course and at college, but we also want to just use this as a an incubator or a time when you can start thinking about uh, what does it feel like when I'm engaged in the work that I do, and then how can I expand that into um, uh, the work world once I enter, once I graduate from college and I've got a job. Uh, how do I know that I can manage my own engagement and my own personal well-being um, uh, once I've left college? Uh, we also want to help you understand how to set some goals specifically around networking on campus. Um, we know from some of the research that we uh, that you're going to be looking at from Gallup that um, uh, students in college that have had had uh, a, a network and a deeper relationship with uh, uh, with peers, staff, and faculty are more likely to be engaged and have well-being once they graduate. We also know that engaging in campus activities, uh, being involved on campus, is another way to enhance your academic development, but also uh, helps prepare you for uh, life after college in a way that uh, maybe um, uh, academic uh, work doesn't. And so it's a key part of your development here at college, and we want to help you leverage that in the best way possible as well. Um, so the first thing that's going to happen, uh, uh, one of the first things that you're going to be required to do for the course is to take the StrengthsFinder instrument. We need to identify what your, your talents are that can be developed into strengths, and we're going to use this assessment to do that. I'm going to briefly go to the StrengthsQuest website. Uh, you'll be sent a code in, the, in just a few days. Maybe you've already received it, but you'll be receiving a code via email and uh, an alert through Canvas that you've received this email that will have um, uh, a unique code in it. And what you'll do is you'll go to strengthsquest.com. And I'm going there now. So I'm on the website, actual website right now, strengthsquest.com. And what you'll do is you'll just go up here in the upper right-hand corner. You'll click access code that I'm making blank on and off there. Click access code. You'll copy and paste the code that was sent to you in that email. It's about a 15-digit code, a combination of letters and numbers. Uh, and you'll just paste it right here. You'll click that button, you'll go through a registration process that includes some demographic information. Please be reminded that you can take the StrengthsFinder instrument in one of 26 different languages. So if, uh, if you're uncomfortable with taking it in, in English, you also have the option of taking it um, in uh, a bunch of different languages that are provided, but you have to choose that before you actually start the assessment. Uh, so make sure that you take time to read those instructions as you're going through the registration process. Once you've taken StrengthsFinder, you basically will have set up your own uh, StrengthsQuest homepage uh, that will have your strengths and, and uh, reports and all kinds of different information specific to you and your strengths. And so I'm going to go there now. I'm going to click that button and just go right to it. So I've already logged into the StrengthsQuest website, and uh, here is my StrengthsQuest homepage. Um, so uh, it'll, it will have your five strengths on the left-hand side. Uh, my name is James Mark Pogue. I go by my middle name, so that's why it says James. But this is, these are my strengths, self-assurance, activator, ideation, intellection, and command. And then what you'll do is uh, you'll go ahead and scroll down here. The one that we're most interested in is this one right here, the Strengths Insight Report. Uh, so uh, well, what we'll want you to do once you've taken the assessment, um, you'll have this report available to you. And I'm just going to download it, show you exactly what it looks like. It takes a couple minutes for it to pop up, and there it is. There's the Strengths Insight Report. Uh, make sure you save this PDF to your computer. You're going to need this, need it available to you. You want, you might want to print out a physical copy as well. There's actually an assignment that's going to require that of you, so make sure that you've um, uh, printed it out, uh, have a physical copy of it, but also save it on your on your computer. <clears throat> Don't attempt to do everything in this class on your phone. Um, folks have tried it in the past, and it's just not the best way to 
to be successful in the class, make sure that you have access to a computer and you can have uh, information that you access on your computer. Then as well, what you need to do, uh, and I just, I just recommend that you do this just to make sure you have this available, is just to go to um, uh, this page. It's the second page of your report, and there's your five themes. Uh, take a quick picture of that with your phone. Keep that on your phone for the entire length of the course, whether or not you're in the eight week for the semester and the regular semester, or if you're taking a summer session five week course. Make sure that you have that for the entirety of the course on your phone and accessible to you. It's just better to have that information available to you and uh, a quick place to look that up and be reminded of what your strengths are. And so now I'm going to go back to the um, PowerPoint. We'll keep going here. Oh, by the way, there's also an app that's available uh, that you can download. It's called the Strengths Finder app, just Strengths Finder, one word. It's either iOS or um, uh, Android, and you can um, uh, log into that app uh, with your email and password that you used on your Strengths Quest site, and that will load in your Strengths, and you'll have that available to you. Uh, the, both the words, both the names of the, of the strengths, and as well the definitions. So I'd suggest that you uh, utilize that app as well during the course. Everything else is going to be on Canvas. Everything that you need to know, all the assignments, all the information to help you be successful in the class, just make sure you have access to the Canvas uh, learning management system. And if you don't know how to get there, you need to email the Strengths Lab quickly. Don't wait. Make sure that you email us quickly and let us know that you're having difficulties finding Canvas or, or utilizing it, and we'll help you out. Um, expectations that we have. Um, we will inform you about everything that you need to be doing uh, through Canvas. Uh, messages will be sent through Canvas. Um, we cannot be guaranteed that we're going to be able to contact you by email, so make sure that you're on the Canvas system and that you've, uh, made, uh, that you've gone in and set uh, the appropriate settings on the Canvas site to receive um, alerts uh, that you've received messages on Canvas. Um, they won't come in your email unless you've requested that and made those settings, made those appropriate settings um, within, within Canvas. So make sure that you get on the settings page of, of Canvas and um, get those alerts set both to, uh, uh, you can have them texted to your phone, you can also have them emailed. Make sure that you're checking your email once a day as well. Uh, checking your email is something that you need to, to do to begin to develop a habit of in terms of being a professional anyway, and um, this will get you off on a good start uh, and make sure that you're um, uh, up to date on everything that's required for the course. Again, all the information re re regarding the um, requirements of the course are in the syllabus. You're required to read that syllabus. You also have to take a quiz about it, but just to highlight some big pieces, um, be professional show respect, do original work, and be honest. Don't cheat. If you're caught, you can expect to fail the class. If you're caught cheating, you can expect to fail the class. Uh, that's, that's where we're going to start. And so make sure that um, uh, you recognize the risks if you decide to, um, to cheat or take a shortcut in the course. Email expectations. Hi, Professor Pogue. is great for me. Hi, Mark. I'm fine with that. End with some kind of salutation like a thanks. Um, I won't respond to emails and messages that start with, hey, so just note to self, don't do that. Be a little bit more professional with that. I don't require a lot of formality, but hey, just does not set, with, set well with me. All right. Um, another reminder that I wanted to give you before we move forward, and I know this is, it, it's ridiculous that, it, that I'm even taking the time to show this to you, but please be, please note that BSAD 111 is required to graduate from the College of Business you have to have this complete this course completed before you can walk across the stage and get your diploma uh, through this college. Um, that having said, there's been a lot of people that have repeated this course and had to pay for it more than once, and it's ridiculous that that would be uh, that would be needed because it's a really simple course to pass. If you turn in the assignments uh, and you um, uh, you know you make sure that you uh, attend. The coaching sessions that you're, you're that are required of you within the course. These are one-on-one, -on -one, face to face um, coaching sessions. You cannot do this entire course online if you're taking it in the spring and the fall. The exception would be if you're taking the five-week course in the summer. But to pass this course, you have to have those in-person coaching sessions. And um, so make sure that you make those meetings and turn in your assignments and you will pass. That's all it is. It's that easy. If you don't, you just wasted 300 bucks. Uh, if you're a resident, and if you're a non-resident, you've just wasted almost $900 in taking this course, and you're going to get to pay that money again and take it all over again. So get it done once. This course is just miserable to take for a second time. Not that the coursework isn't just awesome, 
Um, but uh, being required to take it a second time is not going to be any fun for you. All right, taking Strengths Quest, we will send you a code. You will take that code. You will go to the Strengths Quest website. You'll plug in that unique code. You'll register and take um, uh, Strengths Finder. You will then have a Strengths Quest home site, which you'll be able to go and access all the reports on. All you've got to do is remember the email address and password that you created when you set up your um, your login uh, for the Strengths Quest site, and you can always return to it. It never gets turned off. And uh, if you don't receive a code from us, make sure that you email us and let us know so that we can uh, we can tackle that pretty quickly. You should receive it within just one or two days of the course starting, so that you can take the Strengths Finder assessment and complete the rest of your um, assignments for the week. All right, real quickly, I went straight to Canvas now. This is the this is. Uh, um, the module page of Canvas. Um, some of this stuff might change over time. Uh, we're going to continue to use this recording, so if there's slight adjustments to uh, what you see on your actual Canvas course, don't worry about it. But right now, uh, there is a section at the very top, course requirements. Make sure that you step through and look at those. Uh, there is a quick quiz that's required of you uh, for the syllabus, and there's also that, CB, that pesky CBA ethics quiz. So make sure that you've taken that. You've got to pass. You've got to pass it 100%. Um, and that means you have to get all eight questions, I believe, correct. You can take it as many times as you want, that ethics quiz, but you've got to keep taking it until you hit 100%, and you've, you've, gotten, you've, you've gotten every single item correct, okay? Uh, there's also a pre-course survey that's required, so you have to do that too. Once you do that, um, uh, we'll move on to the, let's see, yep. And then uh, uh, also wanted to inform you, this again, here's another uh, page for the settings. Make sure that you visit this page and get your settings correct. You can see over here on the right hand side setting up email addresses and contact methods. Make sure that you've done that. All right, this is the course syllabus. It's one of the tabs on your your um, your Canvas site. You need to make sure you've checked that out, read it, and taken the quiz. And then as well, the modules for the first week. So, all right, so this is module one. Excuse me. There, this is module one. And for module one, you're required to um, take the pre-course survey, the CBA ethics quiz. There's an assignment called your top five strengths. And um, you're also required to read and highlight your insight report and take a picture of that. Make sure that that gets done. And uh, then there's every week you're going to be required to do a discussion post. Uh, so make sure that um, you click on, all you need to do is just click on um, this item on, on Canvas and it'll go straight to the module or straight to the discussion post. You're required to respond to the post and then also comment on two of your fellow students. All right, wanted to jump in and, and just at least begin some of the content of the course before uh, you're required to go do some coursework and take StrengthsFinder. So before launching into that, uh, uh, we wanted to talk about, just to have an introduction to strengths, just a brief introduction. And so the way I define strengths in a real simple way is that these are unique behaviors that you use to get things done. And I'll, I'll go back, and I think I've even mentioned this before, but I think it's worth repeating, is that StrengthsFinder and this whole course is set up on the idea that you would have the opportunity uh, to not only um, uh, identify what some of your unique behaviors are, these talents that you possess, uh, things that you can leverage to be great at something, uh, but also help you apply those to get something done, to get work done. And I think that's what differentiates everything that you might have ever done before uh, associated with understanding your personality, personality assessments that you might have taken or tests or little quizzes that you've taken on the internet. Um, uh, this is more specific not only about just identifying behaviors, but also understanding those be behaviors to the depth that you can apply them to get work done. What are strengths? Well, they are things that describe us. They give us a language. So now we have these words that describe what our particular strengths are. They influence our choices. They help us understand better um, why we make the choices that we do. They direct our actions. Sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of doing something and we don't even know how that happened. And most likely it was because of the influence of our strengths. They just draw us towards doing certain things. Maybe most importantly, they explain why we are better at some things than others. And I think this is one of the crucial points of this course is to begin to understand that there are opportunities that you'll have in your life that you can leverage your strengths. Um, and you'll have to make choices. You'll have to make a choice between a good thing and maybe a better thing that allows you to better utilize your strengths and to do something um, uh, to excellence versus just average or mediocre or even just good. Instead, we're stretching you now to uh, help you understand those places in the world and those things that you can do uh, to excellence. And that's what we want to do. We want to give you the opportunity to be able to identify for, and identify those opportunities for yourself 
personally as you move forward uh, in your uh, career here as a student and then afterwards uh, in the work world. So why strengths? Well, why is this particular approach better than others in terms of identifying those behaviors and allowing you to be uh, excellent at something? Well, one of the things that we know based on the research that we have of people and organizations that utilize strengths uh, to help employees be more successful is that employees and people in the workforce that are utilizing their strengths are faster. They learn their role faster and adapt to change more quickly. And so they're just quicker um, on the job, figuring out what to do and being able to do it effectively. In addition to that, uh, even though they're doing things quickly, they also can be more precise. Now that would seem to be counter, counter to, uh, to how we would expect things to usually work. In fact, usually it's a trade-off. If you're faster, then you lose precision or vice versa. But what we find in the research that we've done about people working out of their strengths is that they actually can have increases in both speed and precision when they're working out of their strengths. Lastly, they're present. People that are working out of their strengths are there every day. Um, they stay longer, they miss less days, and they build stronger relationships with the people that they work with. The picture that I have to represent that here on the screen is, is um, a picture of Memorial Stadium and, a, and, a, and a sold, another sold-out crowd. And... Um, our, our fans, uh, our Husker fans are there and they're present because they're engaged in what they're doing. And I think um, that's all a part of, um, uh, that's a part of engagement. It's that emotional energy that you have to be present. And, um, and, and that's, a, that's a perfect illustration or perfect picture of, of what presence looks like when you have 91,000 fans uh, cheering on the Huskers. But it, it leads us to a larger topic about engagement here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, people operating from their strengths are more emotionally connected to their role um, and to the leader, to their leader, and to their institution. So what we know is that folks that are engaged in their work um, are typically ones that are working out of their strengths. It just contributes more so to that emotional engagement, that presence, um, that commitment that they have to the organization that they're in. So that's why strengths are important. They're not only important to organizations, so that's why you know, a company might choose to have strengths development within their organization because they know they're going to get more out of their employees. But from your perspective, when you think about it personally and selfishly, you want to develop your own strengths and you want to know what your strengths are and when your strengths uh, have the op best opportunity to be in play uh, because uh, you'll be more likely, you'll be in a better position and more likely to be able to locate and to identify roles where you're going to be engaged in the work that you do. And you want that engagement. That engagement is going to lead um, to higher levels of satisfaction that you have in the work that you do. And you're just going to be a happier person. I'll end with this quote, you can't be anything you want to be, but you can be a lot more of who you already are. I think this in a nutshell, encapsulates what strengths are all about. It's not just the idea that um, we're going to identify some behaviors that we know are consistent with you and, and um, you know, just have a little bit more knowledge of self. That's important and that's great. Uh, but instead, uh, it gives us the opportunity to identify some things that we know, not just behaviors, uh, but also, uh, you know, talents that we have that are unique to, our, to who we are uh, that give us the opportunity to um, maybe do something better than somebody else and give us that competitive advantage that we need in the workplace to be successful. Uh, in addition to that, it gives, and when, you, when we think about it in the sense of an organization, and we'll, we'll explore this a little bit more uh, in, a, in a couple sessions when we talk specifically about strengths and teams, um, when we think about strengths, what we're doing is we're giving us an opportunity to see how we fit within an organization and how we can best contribute to the su overall success of an organization. All right, so this week, the big reminder that I have for you is that there is a discussion board requirement of the course. So for every, uh, every module that we complete, uh, you'll need to um, uh, participate in a, uh, in a discussion board. And um, uh, the, um, the link to that is right there within the module. All you have to do is click on the link and it'll take you straight to the uh, discussion board. And you'll have to respond to a question or uh, reflect on something, and then you're also required to uh, comment on a couple of fellow students. And make sure you give everybody a, an opportunity to get on and, and um, uh, participate on the discussion board so that there's a, a fuller discussion. And I will be monitoring that, so I'm looking forward to seeing your comments there. Hope you have an awesome week. Thanks so much.